If you are looking to win $1 million in week 18 of the NFL season, we're going to help you out and we're going to set you up to do it. And we're going to do it not now, but right now. Bada bing, bada bang, Dollaruski's galore this week is what we're feeling to end off the season. We're going to start at the quarterback position. Hey, yo, you fellas, you fellas, you fellas, you beautiful people out there. Let's start it off at the quarterback position. And yes, there is a lot of scenarios for playoffs. Uh, who is going to be playing? Who is not going to be playing? Who is injured? Who is sitting out for the postseason? All of that stuff we will try to speculate upon as best as we possibly can heading into this week. But we will also understand that once these players step on the football field and do the job that they enjoy to play, even if they're not going to be making the playoffs this Sunday, if those players are healthy... Hey, why not just go have some fun out there? Hey, why not just pad your stats even more out there, right? So let's start this bad boy off with the Buffalo Bills, who the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, look, I I'm interested in Josh Allen, but they they're not playing for much. They can't drop below number four. They can't get the number one seed. So they can go two, three, or four. At that point, it kind of just depends on who do you really want to play? Do you, do you want to play the Colts or do you want to instead, maybe you're going to play the Chargers, right? Like, okay, maybe the Raiders. But at this point, like, who are you actually going to play? You don't really have much control over that. You just have control over your seating, which maybe you get an extra home game you want to get to the two seed but they'll kind of know what the Chiefs do on Saturday already so maybe the two seed is already locked up and if that's the case then Buffalo is vying for this three and four spot which maybe maybe down the road it probably doesn't end up leading anything for you to a home field advantage game but we'll see after the first round of course we'll see I don't think Buffalo is going to be attempting to go all out here they probably don't have to against the New York Jets in this one I mean when you're looking at it right now the current odds as of this recording they are 16 and a half point favorites and if you watched the betting video this week we like that 16 and a half baby we took it earlier in the year when it was 17 and they absolutely smacked around the New York Jets so Josh Allen is in play but he's not a priority for me the first priority comes up on the screen that man's name for me is going to be Kyler Murray Kyler Murray and his team is actually in a situation where they can still win the division they have a 22 percent chance heading in this game to actually win the division only a two percent chance to win the Super Bowl where they currently sit in the NFC the loaded NFC but still a chance to win the division a chance to move up in some of these playoff seedings but Kyler comes into this one with a positive 20 percent pass blocking advantage it was one of the better ones that we've seen three of his last four games you're seeing that mobility back he looks healthier at this point even in games without Hopkins with Christian Kirk kind of playing out of position having to go back to the outside with not much athleticism from Antonio Wesley although he was with Kingsbury in college so he's kind of his guy that's why he's out there more Kyler is still able to manufacture points on the ground and just these extended plays lead to big plays in general so Kyler Murray here is the first guy who stands out to me as okay I like what I'm seeing here I like the 27 and a half implied team solo I like the matchup against say Seattle I like the fact that they're potentially going to be still playing at this point for a division and at least to move around in seating so Kyler if we're looking at a guys above the price tag of not just seven thousand dollars but above sixty five hundred dollars he's really the only guy who screams out to me Josh Allen Tom Brady they could be in play they're fine they're not guys that I'm jumping up and down to go get to Kyler is the first guy that does that for me now that being said Josh Allen projects out for more points but he's also a lot more money so next up and he's not projecting out by that much more about a point to two points more next up we get to the 6k range and parts of the 5k range and we get to another guy who i like Taysom hill the saints have a 40 percent chance to make the playoffs basically they have to win their game they have to otherwise they don't get in and have san francisco who come in as six point underdogs to the rams on the road San Francisco has to lose. So San Francisco is expected to lose. The Saints right now are actually expected to win, but they have a 40% chance because both those things actually have to happen, right? They have to win where San Fran can get it and if the Saints just lose. It's a divisional matchup against Atlanta. And look, Atlanta is by no means, by no means a solid defense. I've been saying all season long, heading into the year, outside of Grady Gerald, this defensive line, this defense, AJ Terrell in the secondary, they got two players. They got one player in the defensive front. Other than that, it's not that great. So now you're going to be getting a defensive line that struggles to get pressure on the quarterback. Right now, they currently rank dead last, 32nd in pass rush. And Taysom Hill's coming to town hey Taysom Hill a man who can run the ball on the ground he is coming to town against the pass rush that struggles to tackle and struggles to actually get to the quarterback more time for Taysom Hill if it's not meaning open receivers which I, I doubt with the receiving core they have it's probably leading to him taking off and scrambling a bit more so Taysom Hill if we're saying okay Kyler looks solid up top maybe we get a lot of value this week players not playing injury status in the final week they just sit out all that stuff playing for contracts next year all right maybe we get some value we can go all the way up to Kyler or Josh Allen but Taysom Hill at this price tag is $6,200 actually playing for something here actually looks Looking like one of the better options at $6,200 this week. In my opinion, it's like him and Kyler up top right now. I think he looks really solid. Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, more of these larger field GPPs, your Millie makers, not your small fields, not your single entries. But I will say this. If Kirk Cousins is out there and actually going to play the COVID status, all that type of stuff, if they put him out there, Mike Zimmer already has shown no interest in playing Calamon. You kind of got the Sean Mannion experience. I don't know how much more they want to show that. If Cousins goes out there in a matchup against a poor Bears secondary, a poor Bears pass rush with Khalil Mack has clearly taken a step back, sadly, a great player, taking a step back this year. Don't be shocked in these games that don't mean a goddamn thing or when you least expect it to see 
see Kirk Cousins to a Justin Jefferson, uh, to a Tyler Conklin, the Cousins 350 yard game and multiple touchdown pass. Don't don't be shocked is what I'm saying in these larger field contests. The matchup is there, the price point is fine. Don't be shocked. I keep scrolling down. So so we've kind of mentioned Kyler. We've mentioned Taysom Hill. Of course, things can change on Friday. Like if for some reason Kyler's now out, right? COVID scare happens and Taysom Hill's out, right? All this stuff. We've already seen Taysom Hill miss for that though. So we should be good there. But just those types of things. I'll be sending updates. Obviously, Saturday and Sunday will be live streaming. So we can just touch on it then. The final guy who looks good to me because Justin Fields is on the COVID list, not expecting him to play now. Lamar Jackson has not practiced in weeks. He has not practiced Wednesday or Thursday as of this week. It's the final game of the year and the Ravens have a 2% chance to make the playoffs. They're not making the playoffs. They're done for the year. Why force a guy with a bum ankle out there? The final guy is going to be Tyler Huntley. I don't like anybody else below the $6,000 range. Tyler Huntley, and you might be saying, oh, but Sal, you liked the guy last week. You liked this Tyler Huntley character last week, and he got me 12 fucking fantasy points. Well, if you actually watch the game against the number one defense, which I knew going into that, he was low-owned. We liked him because he was low-owned, and he dropped 30-plus points the week before, and every time in the preseason, you look good, and oh, yeah, he has great mobility, 100-plus rushing yards. We liked him because of that, the low-owned. Yeah, the matchup wasn't the greatest. The secondary for the Rams is not great. Their pass rush, now that it's healthy, they're, they're tackling, that's solid. But he marched right down the field. He went right down the field. And what happens? Justin Tucker has four field goals. They stall in the red zone. They stall in the red zone and Justin Tucker has four field goals. If they just cash in on two of those, it's a 20 plus point week for Tyler Huntley. Just go 50%. Now you go from the number one overall defense to a bottom 10 defense in the NFL in the Pittsburgh Steelers. That does not have at this point, they have TJ Watt, and Cam Hayward up front. They have a somewhat pass rush. Outside of TJ Watt, like an average pass rush, TJ Watt makes it really good, right? Going for the sacks record. But not a good tackling unit, not a good secondary. This is a fine spot for Tyler Huntley, who I'm expecting to play. Now, maybe things change on Friday and Lamar's coming back for whatever reason. But when I start to get down here, Tyler Huntley is the next best thing. So I like Kyler. I like Taysom Hill. I like Tyler Huntley as of the news that we have. I think that Josh Allen is completely fine, especially if we get more value. Some concerns on maybe not playing a full game. I expect them, though, to be out there for a good amount of that game. And then you start to get to guys who are lesser interest of mine, uh, uh, but still in play. A Tom Brady, a Cousins, and a Tannehill in your larger field stuff. So, with that being said, let us now transition to... You beautiful people, hey, the running back position. And before we keep going, I'll let you know about the beautiful sponsors of the program, prizepicks.com. And if you use the code SAL on these best player props in the industry, over-unders on fantasy points, different sports, different props, you can see passing, rushing, receiving, passing touchdowns for a whole lot of players and fantasy points will open up. The code SAL will get you a free bet, that is F-R-E, free bet, up to $100 in your first deposit. Here you go, bada bing, bada bang, and if you want a first bet to be playing this week. If you want to tail something here, I have Mr. Austin Eckler over 28 and a half receiving yards and Alvin Kamara over 57 and a half rushing yards. Both these players are playing for something this week. They are the biggest pieces of their offense. There you go. You take the overs on those two fellows. You use the code SAL on pricepicks.com. You take any other props you want and you get a free bet up to $100. Pricepicks.com. Code SAL to take advantage of the offer. So now we get into a running back position that is getting a little bit murky as some guys aren't practicing and maybe not playing for much at this point. So maybe they don't play. Up top, we know Jonathan Taylor is playing for something. This team has not even clinched a spot in the playoffs yet. They are very likely to make the playoffs. They have an 89% chance to make the playoffs, but they can't win their division. They can't get a first round bye at this point. So the Colts, for the most part, they're just trying to kind of lock into that fourth seed. And if they get a win where they're 15 and a half point favorites, when Jonathan Taylor is out there, potentially trying to go towards some rushing records in the week 18 of the season, the 17th game, with a 30 implied team total as a massive favorite. Yeah, the man's got to be in play. I prefer him over Cooper Cup. He projects out for me for the most fantasy points on the slate, including the quarterbacks more than anybody else. Obviously, that has to be in play. Obviously, it's going to be taking some ownership with it. I think that Jonathan Taylor will be the highest on running back on the slate. He'll be up there definitely in the top two to three. I think Taylor probably comes in somewhere around 25% on this week. That being said, I think it's completely fine. I don't think it's a bad leverage play. Alvin Kamara actually playing for something is somebody who stands out to me, especially in small field tournaments. $1,000 savings off of Jonathan Taylor. The problem is he has a 22 team implied total. This will probably be a much slower paced game against Atlanta, one of the slowest paced games on the slate. So that's a little bit of a concern, but I do think he's going to be a nice GPP leverage as I don't think he touches 10% on. Now you get to this range of $7,000 players. There's no Joe Mixon. He's already ruled out. Nick Chubb, as of Wednesday and Thursday, dealing with multiple injuries, a knee, a chest injury. He has not practiced this week. We might not see him, which boosts all the way up. Mr. Kareem Hunt, if he was to be the lead back there. So track that. I've mentioned some concerns with Alvin Cook, a five and a half point favorite, but look, the guy's been banged up this entire season. Last game of the year, that doesn't mean anything at this point. Maybe they don't give him the biggest workload possible heading into next year. So above this range, really honestly, like above $6,800, if you don't count Montgomery, there's a lot of murky statuses here. The guys who are going to be out there and playing and they're playing for something are Jonathan Taylor and Alvin Kamara. They happen to be the most expensive. You're probably not getting both of them together. 
As of right now, Alvin Kamara is probably going to come in with half the ownership as Jonathan Taylor. Now, to the 6-8K range we go, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. Like, there's not a lot standing out. Like, wide receiver is where everything kind of stands out. Running back is, because of all the murky, no Joe Mixon. Aaron Jones probably not going to get a full workload in those Packers starters. Because of some of this, Nick Chubb maybe dealing with injury, not going to play, not playing for anything. I mean, you get David Montgomery. Price point is increasing. Only a 19.5 implied team total with Andy Dalton out there. Six-point underdogs. Like, that doesn't feel... That I know I know the workload's incredible. It doesn't feel that great as the price is slowly starting to get up there. The guys that I'm interested in, I'm really interested in James Conner if he's able to play. He's been practicing on a limited basis. Chase Edmonds, and again, Arizona's playing for something. A great team total, six and a half point favorites. Chase Edmonds has not yet practiced this week on Wednesday and Thursday. If you don't see at least a limited practice on Friday, it's wheels up for James Conner, who is likely going to come back in this game and take on that full red zone workload. The routes run if there's no Chase Edmonds. That starts to look really nice. Rashad Penny is another guy. Like, look, the team wants to run the ball. We know that. He's going to get all the red zone touches. He seems to be taking that workhorse responsibility on, but a seven point underdog still not the greatest pass catching role arizona can be run on but the last couple of weeks including against jonathan taylor on saturday football on christmas i believe they've looked solid so if you're looking up top at your alvin kamars or jonathan taylor's it's not until maybe james connor like depending on the status of chase Evans. and either way james connor looks solid even if Evans is in but maybe james connor who seems to get a little bit healthier with this heel injury maybe he's the next guy and at that point now we're approaching this 5k range like saquon can stay in play defensive front for washington is like the only thing that's really been their bread and butter this year if there has been anything on that entire football team sadly for Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson dealing with injuries now next up is Sony Michelle his team they're going to be playing for the division 78% chance to lock it up it's not 100% as of right now but that's a solid spot for Sony Michelle you're not going to see Cam Akers I don't think you see Cam Akers they're saying he's working full speed I think that's for the playoff push that they're going for there so I think Sony Michelle sets up nicely against San Francisco it is a solid defensive front I will say that a solid defensive front in San Francisco that has halted a lot of good running backs but it's a different offensive line a different run blocking scheme here for Sony Michelle and the Rams coming in I think you're going to see a solid a positive 35% run blocking advantage for Michelle this week looks very good Elijah Mitchell has been my darling forever now he's six thousand dollars he continues to see 20 plus touches we'll see if Jimmy G can come back and play even if it's Trey Lance you saw last week Mitchell took over the backfield no touches for Jeff Wilson basically as expected a little work there because he's a dusty player but Elijah Mitchell last time out 27 carries didn't break 100 yards because this is a really good Rams defense it's now a healthy Rams defense that ranks number one against the run Elijah Mitchell is going to have to show something in the passing game to be able to probably stay relevant here. Touchdown upside is always there. The touches are great. They're they're going to be there. And because of that, Mitchell looks a little bit better. But this is the first week that I'm pausing somewhat on Mitchell. Not even a 20 implied team total. Five point underdogs against this defensive front when the Rams can potentially knock their division rival San Francisco, who has given them headaches, especially earlier this year in all of Sean McVay's career. Why not knock them out of the playoffs? Why have to potentially see them next week yet again? So there's a good chance that they're going to be playing pretty motivated there. DeAndre Swift expected to keep the same role. Not interesting to me. These guys here at 58 and 5,700. If Antonio Gibson, who practiced on a limited fashion on Thursday, is able to return, I'll like him a lot. A touchdown favorite. I mean, why kind of put your second-year player out there when you have Jared Patterson looking decent? You have Jonathan Williams you can just burn out there. They're not playing for anything in Washington. I completely understand that. But track the practice reports because if they say that Antonio Gibson is going to play, why else would you not rule him out with this injury that has been limiting him? If he's going to play, I expect him to be fully healthy. At 5,800, I don't think we get many better, many better options there. Deontay Foreman, I know he's been running for 100 plus yards, all that, y- yada, yada, yada. He's been the main back there. He gets Houston now. Houston, although their defensive front is not great, their defense has actually been playing better as of late. It's going to be a positive advantage here, a 10 point favorite for Foreman. I think that Foreman this week is likely going to go slightly over owned since there's not that many great plays, especially if Antonio Gibson does not open up Chase Edmonds if he ends up being in play and not a lot of people go to James Conner. I-, I think that Foreman's probably going to pick up double digit ownership this week. And it's just not something I really want to touch. Like, I-, I don't want to play a-, a 12 to 13. I know it's a different running back. I know he finally looks healthy up the Achilles tear they still have other running backs involved there Houston's defensive front I know it's not a great you're, you're needing like a multiple touchdown game for like a 20 point or a 20 plus point day at a foreman if you're going to play him in a large field GPP at like 15 percent owned other than that there are some viable options Ronald Jones is in a walking boot there's no Leonard Fournette and you get Keyshawn Vaughn at 5300 he is expected to play he was a full participant on Wednesday's practice report so he's good to go I mean Keyshawn Vaughn look this is a this is a player that they ended up taking I believe in the fourth round of last year's draft he's now going to operate is the running back one with Le'Veon Bell, who's been across a bunch of different teams at this point and can't stay on a team. And, and, and that's including the Ravens earlier in the year when they had no running backs. You're going to get Keyshawn Vaughn, who, I mean, look, you're looking at like a 5'11 running back at 215 pounds, third round pick from 2020. He doesn't have that much burst. He has average speed, like slightly above average speed. And, and I mean, what you're going to get is a guy in college who had a solid pass catching ability. So a little bit more upside than a Ronald Jones from that standpoint. You saw it last week against the Jets, two catches on three targets on just 14 routes run. He's played 30 plus percent of the snaps in back to 
back-to-back games. And I think now, look, the problem with Keyshawn Vaughn, and this is a massive fucking problem. So it's not, it, this is why I'm not all in on Keyshawn Vaughn. The problem is this guy doesn't really have good pass protection skills. And I think if anything, maybe Le'Veon Bell, that's where he can get on the field a little bit because Ronald Jones was getting benched last year because he couldn't pass protect for Brady. Brady will get pissed the fuck off if he takes an unnecessary hit either before or after the play because you couldn't block your guy. You couldn't block the guy that he told you to block even worse. So a second year player, he's got good size to him, Keyshawn Vaughn, but he was specifically known for not being able to pass protect. That is my concern here. Keyshawn Vaughn can be doing great. He can have eight carries for 53 yards and looking great. He can get some red zone touches and then he misses a block and he's sat for another quarter to quarter and a half that's the concern that's why i'm not going all in if you're playing cash i'm not going all in on Keyshawn vaughn this team does have a good total 25 point team total favorites here should move the ball a decent amount maybe some check downs go to Keyshawn vaughn take on that leonard Fournette role that ronald jones couldn't fill so there is some upside here but they're just letting hesitating you don't play 100 of this guy there are concerns joe mixon being ruled out opens up samaji p ryan although i do think that samaji p ryan is going to split i mean the veteran p ryan doesn't have the greatest of burst he's just kind of a, a grinding running back at this point he's an older running back been in the league for a lot of years more than people probably expect he's at the age right now of 26 and a half years old he's a 230 pound back doesn't have much speed but look the guy's really strong so he's definitely gonna have the red zone role but chris evans the rookie out of michigan is more of that burst player so i expect a split backfield there i expect p ryan to get the goal line carries keeps him in play but hey i'm not expecting joe burrow to play i'm expecting it to be brandon allen hurts the chances of moving the ball with only a 16 implied total now that 16 implied total against cleveland shows clearly that they're not going to be playing jamar chase t higgins joe burrow etc only other running backs worth to mention michael carter's in the concussion uh, uh, i'll say devonta freeman slow pace game against the steelers but they are favorites in that game should be the lead back yada yada hey, it's okay it's not great especially with a mobile quarterback uh, michael carter i have him in red because he's in the concussion protocol he was able to practice on thursday so it looks like he's trending to clear the concussion protocol but we'll have to end up seeing exactly how that goes he's five thousand dollars flat i'm not seeing anything below five thousand dollars i'm really not seeing anything below the price tag of Keyshawn vaughn 5300 that stands out except michael carter but tevin coleman is expected to be back ty johnson was active last week so if they go back to these three running back sets i do think carter will see the majority of the snaps he saw 73 percent of the snaps two weeks ago when everybody was healthy in that backfield so i do think that'll be in there a good amount only played 13 percent of the snaps had four opportunities on four routes run before getting hurt in the last game that being said three running backs in use for the new york jets with a 12 a 12 and a half implied uh, i've never seen a 12 and a half implied team total gives me some pause now let's transition to the wide receiver position i, I think cooper cup as I've been saying all year long, I think he's still in play. He's going to be going for some records out there. I think that remains him in play. I do prefer Jonathan Taylor, who is cheaper. Uh, for me, Adams isn't in play. For me, Debo's not in play. Totally different role for Debo now in this offense. Tough matchup, and he only got there last week. Uh, because of a last second touchdown and even that's not going to pay off this price tag jamar chase also not in play i don't think that he's going to be playing out there i don't even know if he starts the only dude this week so far that's above 75 or let's call it 7200 dollars that really stands out to me is going to be justin jefferson and it's the same reason if kirk cousins is in if kirk Cousins is out just go up to cooper cup if you don't want to get there you can take a look at steph Diggs at 7800 still getting a lot of usage not really coming through on it as much, but still getting a lot of usage. But if Kirk Cousins plays and they put Justin Jefferson out there, I would expect these guys to go out there and try and play. I would expect Justin Jefferson to try and continue to put up these monster first two-year numbers. Justin Jefferson, I have for over 20 fantasy points this week. He will look like a darling. You can stack him with Kirk Cousins. You can play him as a one-off. At $8,100, he's really the only receiver above this price tag that stands out to me above $8,000. Steph Diggs also definitely stands out because of the team total. Some concerns on how much they're actually going to throw there. Matchup, though, against the Jets all season long. It would be the perfect ending to the season if a somewhat low-owned Steph Diggs, because people pay up for Jonathan Taylor and Cup and then go down to the 7 and 6K range at receiver, if a somewhat low-owned Steph Diggs, who's still seeing the same volume as last year, look, the deep ball accuracy for Josh Allen wasn't there earlier in the year, fell off in the middle of the season, come back a little bit lately, it would be the perfect end to the year for him to finally have one of those 100-plus yards and multiple touchdown games. Diggs is in play, Jefferson is in play, somewhat Cup if you can get there, tough to get there. That's where I'm looking above really 7K. There are some options in the low 7K range. Mike Evans, this is the, not many people are going to keep this in mind. Last week of the year, Stefan Gilmore, who is the number one cornerback for the Carolina Panthers and has been playing well this year since they acquired him, is now out this week because of COVID. He was placed in the COVID list. Mike Evans is like the only dude out there. And the one concern about Mike Evans is you can't really play the offense through him. But no Stefan Gilmore, no top cornerbacks left there, right? Uh, the cornerback that they ended up drafting, top 10 pick, he got hurt earlier in the season. That's why they ended up going and getting Gilmore. So Mike Evans is now going to have a slightly easier matchup which makes me like him a little bit more as i don't think many people will know that aj brown will soak up all the ownership in that range against houston as he probably should but it's going to leave mike evans a little bit lower on he's a nice leverage option 
I'm going to St. Brown. DK Metcalf dudes are definitely in play. St. Brown is, is going out there, balling out. He says he's going full steam ahead to end his rookie year. Uh, he's not going to get 1,000 yards in his rookie year unless he has a 200-yard game, but he can get to 900-plus yards as a rookie, which would be uh, some of the best numbers that we've seen as a rookie. Very quietly because he's not putting up Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase-type numbers in their rookie years. Tyler Lockett, I think, is better leverage off of DK. They both had low volume. Lockett had very low volume last week, but both had low volume. Nothing to play for here except maybe Russ's last game. Uh, this 7K range is definitely defined, or the lower 7K range to the to the whole 6K range is defined by me for Mike Evans' leverage, A.J. Brown being a clear option, Tyler Lockett a decent play, and all the leverage in the world on Mr. Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin gets the New York Giants this week. A New York Giants secondary and pass rush and run defense and overall defense that is not good. Terry McLaurin, they've already stated that they're going to go out there and play some football this week. The Washington football team has not been playing for much these last two weeks, so why not against the division? Division rival just go have some fun and if you're going to give Taylor Heineke YOLO ball here and Terry McLaurin is going to come in this week because he has been struggling Terry McLaurin has put up he's coming off of a game of seven catches for 61 yards but before that seven seven zero five and nine fantasy points that is terrible but now if you're going to give him the New York Giants who earlier this season he went off for his best game of the year against James Bradbury for 11 catches 107 yards and 14 targets right 30.7 fantasy points, his best day on the year. Had a good game against Atlanta a couple weeks back, pretty comparable in terms of 30 fantasy point days. I think McLaurin at 5% owned is, he's going to be a that one dude probably. We'll see when we get there. He's going to be like 3% owned with like an 8 to 10% chance with so many guys sitting this week to be there. And this is a dude who has a ceiling. Terry McLaurin has a massive ceiling and he's only coming in as of this point at $6,200. I'm not letting that slip by me. So in this range of the 6K range and the lower 7K range, Evans and Terry McLaurin for leverage. Lockett is just a solid play. And A.J. Brown is your higher owned dude if you're already playing a lot of dudes that are low owned. The 5 to 6K range now. I mean, if, if you're playing Kyler Murray, Christian Kirk takes a priority in stacks. Darnell Mooney with likely Andy Dalton honestly makes me feel a little bit more secure than a Justin Fields at this point. So in play. Michael Pittman Jr. is going to be a leverage play. He's very close to a yes for me. I'm just concerned that Wentz might only throw 18 times in this game. Solid matchup. Really good spot. The concern is that even in like a 30% target share, Pittman's only seeing like six targets. So that's that's the that's the downside here. DJ Moore is a run back in your Tampa Bay stack. Should continue to see a high target share as an underdog. Expect Sam Darnold to throw 35 to 40 times. Russell Gage is the only option in an Atlanta game that should be competitive. Gage moves into the slot, avoids Lattimore, who's having very quietly yet again another stud cornerback year. And then you quickly drop to this range that is a dead range. It was kind of a dead range last week from like 4,500 to blow at receiver. It becomes a dead range real fucking quick this week at receiver. Like $5,400 AJ Green in your stacks, I guess, as a one-off, I guess. He's running a lot of routes. They have a good team total. Yes, I think that's fine. But then after that, I mean, with all the backup quarterbacks that are in teams running the ball, maybe not playing, I got to get down to like 4900 when I see Cole Beasley as a stack option. Rashad Bateman as an option with Marquise Brown on the injury report on Thursday. It looks okay. 10 targets, but not much downfield with Huntley last week. And then Devontae Parker, that, like, that's what I'm looking at here. Below $5,000, I'm like, okay, Beasley, Bateman, not much upside, not much downfield usage, touchdown or bust. Okay, Parker's there, but matchup against New England, 16 and a half implied total. Downfield usage doesn't look great with Tua, who's not throwing downfield. Okay, I know I have a yes on it, but that's just to choose a guy out of these three. It's really difficult. Like, I keep scrolling here. $4,400 is, is Cyril Grayson, who I know everybody. Everybody and their mother is going to say, oh, but Cyril Grayson, there's no receivers out there. Cyril Grayson had the nice catches on the final drive in the touchdown last week from Tom Brady. This is a man who has 11 career receptions, bounced around five practice squads this year. And I know guys on like on the Packers, Rasheel Douglas did that, and he's looked great. Interceptions, lots of stuff, lots of upside for them. That's a gem. That's a hidden gem. Cyril Grayson, a track star who is undersized with not a lot of route running ability. He's going to run go routes. And maybe he hits one of those like he did at the end of the game against a terrible Jets secondary. Something tells me, though, that a guy with 11 career receptions and only two before two weeks ago is not just going to become that dude downfield now when Gronk is still there and Mike Evans is still there. And even Tyler Johnson is still there in the slot. I would actually prefer, if you're looking for a guy below $5,000, Parker, Bateman, Beasley, they look man okay. I would like, I would prefer Tyler Johnson in the slot to see O. Grayson, some underneath stuff. Carolina is going to play a cover two. And then I actually like Allen Robinson. $4,000 flat Allen Robinson with Andy Dalton. If anything, Andy Dalton actually gives Allen Robinson a little bit more upside than Justin Fields does. Obviously, he's not as mobile. And we've at least seen somewhat consistent play, like 10 fantasy points on 11 targets to start the year with Dalton. 10 fantasy points on and a touchdown in the second week. And then last week, you see six targets on 22 routes. I mean, it, it's not great here, but we're at $4,000 flat against Minnesota. Could be a sneaky run back, quote unquote sneaky. Allen Robinson to close the year off on a miserable year. We don't have much below $5,000. At $4,000 and below, we damn sure don't have anything. I don't like anything below Allen Robinson's price tag. You can call out some names. Oh, Sal, Olmedy Zacchaeus, uh, if there's no 
uh, Kyle Pitts, Deontay Harris. Like, I don't, I don't want any of these dudes. Like, I'm looking at this right. I don't want any of these dudes. If you're looking at it, four thousand dollar Allen Robinson is the lowest I'd go at a position this week. It is gross once you start to get below five thousand dollars. It makes playing guys like Tyler Huntley and Taysom Hill cheaper quarterbacks. Right, it makes them a little bit more appealing. Right, when you don't have a great amount of running backs, especially if Antonio Gibson can't play, you don't have a great amount of receivers. We'll get more news for sure. We can close up with the tight end position now. I mentioned on the first look that tight end looks very similar to last week in terms of Rob Gronkowski and Zacherts project out the best. Their ownership numbers are somewhat in check. And I'll go right back there. Gronk, 100-yard game. Price point really doesn't change. I expect ownership 10% or so to be there. But I like those dudes. I think George Kittle, after after being priced up and not having a good week the last time out, I think you could have very easily as an underdog now. It is a very difficult matchup. Jalen Ramsey will be there. Solid safety play from the Rams this year. Good secondary play when they're actually health, healthy and out there for COVID. Yeah, George Kittle's going to be a tough spot, but he won't be owned at all. If you're pe- going to pay up, I prefer Kittle over Andrews. But yeah, I mean, Rob Gronkowski and Zach Ertz continue to be the dudes you can rely on for 8 to 10 targets. Their quarterbacks are eyeing them down. Zach Ertz is benefiting from Christian Kirk playing outside more, which allows Zach Ertz to get a little bit more free in the middle of the field, where Kyler seems a, Kyler seems a lot more comfortable throwing the ball. And then after that, it's kind of like, like these uh, Tyler Higby and Ram stacks. It's been like that all season long. Okay, if he hits, you get the correlation upside. Uh, Tyler Conklin, if Kirk Cousins plays, right? Gerald Everett. The other guy that I will say is Cole Komet. I like Cole Komet. Andy Dalton likes Cole Komet. Cole Komet is very much so on this sh- on this track record of rookie year and slowly came out at the end of the year. Second year slowly, and now he's starting to do some things out there. He looks really good. Third year, Cole Komet is going to be the fantasy darling. I'm telling you, once everybody starts making their fucking fantasy football videos in May, he's going to be the fantasy darling pushed up into the drafts to the point where you can't draft him. So start drafting this dude right when best ball drafts come out for season three or year three of his career because Cole Komet just looks good. I mean, you're seeing five plus targets in every single game except for one dating back to week five of this season. Five plus in every game as a second year tight end, playing next to Allen Robinson, playing with a rookie in, in Justin Fields, playing next to Darnell Mooney who commands targets, playing with Andy Dalton. By the way, Andy Dalton's last three starts, 35 or more passes in each game. Now gets the Vikings defense that is banged up, not playing dudes this week because they're on the, the COVID list or they're just banged up in general. They're out for the year. No, Like Everson Griffin and all these dudes that are hurt. That feels Anthony Barr, right? That feels not that I want to play Andy Dalton, but as pass catchers, I think you can get away with a either a Mooney, either a Robinson for cheap, or a Cole Komet for cheaper. Other than that, track the status of Kyle Pitts. He says he's going to play. Did not practice on Wednesday and Thursday with a hamstring, so it is a lower body injury for the rookie. He wants to continue to break records in his rookie year. So, yeah, I mean, track him if he's out. Hayden Hurst is expected to go. Hayden Hurst is a legit tight end who looks good. Other than that, I, I think that one of the better plays at the tight end position is going to be John Bates. John Bates is a solid rookie tight end. He's athletic. They use the tight end there. I think that he's going to have a solid matchup. I would not be shocked to see a Millie Maker lineup use these next guys. Like, you can clip this and put this on Twitter, and everybody will think I'm a genius, even though I'm probably not going to play it. I would not be shocked to see a Millie Maker lineup that has Terry McLaurin, John Bates, and Taylor Heineke. Maybe Saquon on the run back, but more than likely no run back. But if you were to run it back, Saquon. That type of build sounds disgusting, but it's week 18 when these defenses don't really give a fuck and the offenses just want to play YOLO ball. I would not be shocked. So to recap the tight end position, I continue to like Zach Ertz and Gronk. For the cheap options, Hayden Hurst and John Bates look good, and so does Cole Komet. And if you want to go up top for a leverage play, a leverage play that will look good. And we had this leverage play a couple weeks back, but he was a little bit cheaper, $800 cheaper. But George Kittle is going to be, I mean, George Kittle might be 5% owned on a 13-game slate when so many dudes are out and hurt when they're playing to get into the playoffs. He's a massive piece of that offense. We know that. He'll be about 5% owned. So keep that in mind for a dude that should be probably... 15% 15% on this week. So thank you for tuning in to the final regular season. We'll have every week of the playoffs. Don't worry. And then look, I mean, the Super Bowl goes till mid-February this year. We'll have a little time off. And then April starts the USFL, the United States Football League. And look, they don't have any announcements out yet that DraftKings is going to have DFS or anything like that. But we all know if there's a new sport and it's football, how do you get fans to buy in real quickly? Oh, yeah, your, your DFS players and your betters are going to be the ones that actually sustain your business. That's to you, USFL. Make it happen. Tweet the at USFL to get their DFS rights up and get those up quick. Because if that's the case... We're going to take a little six-week hiatus, right? The Golf Betting Network's not leaving. If you're not already subscribed to that, go check it out. A little hiatus, and then bam, we're right back into it, potentially in a new studio with a new editor behind the scenes, somebody to banter with. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before that, the best time of the year, the NFL playoffs are here. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to use the code SAL to get a free bet up to $100. If you already got it, tell your mother, your brother, your sister, your aunt to take advantage of it. They get a free $100. You get to support the channel right here and support Prize Picks. We keep the partner. And the world goes merry-go-round. So use the code SAL to get that free bet up to $100. Thank you very much. We will be live on Saturday before the Saturday slate and on Sunday before the Sunday slate. You got me all weekend long, baby. I'll see you there.